Once again, taking your Bibles and turning to Ezekiel chapter 37, starting at verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I held, beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophecy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great many. And you can go in there and read the rest of the story there. But the title of the message this morning is The Bones and the Breath. The bones and the breath. These bones refer to the whole house of Israel, as we see there in verse 1. As a nation, they are scattered over the open valley of the whole world, separated bone from his bone and very dry. But the time will come when the breath of God's spirit shall come upon them and they shall stand upon their feet an exceeding great army of witnesses for God and for his Christ. And I take this to be the 144,000 that will be saved and they will <clears throat> turn the Jewish world upside down with their preaching. But surely there is a present day application of all scripture divinely breathed. So we want to observe several things this morning, but we see Israel in distress right now. And their distress is still the same as it always has been because they refuse to accept Christ as their Savior. There's where their problem is. And they are as dry bones. And uh, they will never be defeated, but they will sure be uh, persecuted to the point of almost to that but now we see this very thing unfolding. Israel's still full of dry bones. And God's going to give them everything back to them. They're gonna, he's going to raise them back up. They're going to be a mighty army. And we may think, well, they're a mighty army now. But not like they will be. Amen. Not like they will be. The first point we want to make here is, is how this vision came to Ezekiel. 
He said in verse 1, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit. Let me say this same language when John, you know, he was praying and the Spirit of God came upon him and we can see what happened. Christ gave him his revelation and told him to write it down. Well, here we see Ezekiel being commanded by God. Now I can, you know, when we see this, we see, wow, what a valley this must have been. And he's seeing this. But we want to look at it, too, in the sense that we must be in the spirit to see things as they really are, as God sees them. See, if we, if we weren't in the spirit, you have to understand, he pulled him away from where he was at in the spirit, and he was able to see these things. This is where revival begins. This is where revival begins. We need to see the situation at hand. We need to see what's going on. We need to understand what's going on. We understand what's going on, but many people do not because they cannot discern spiritual things. This is a spiritual battle that's going on. The second point we want to make this morning is what the vision was. What was the vision that he had? Well, it was there again in verse one, it was a valley. If you can picture this, you know, I pictured like Death Valley or a desert, you know, that's it's real dry and hot. But this was a valley full of bones, head over here and an arm over here and a finger over there and a foot over there, and a leg over there. And it, they were scattered all over. Isn't Israel scattered all over today? God is bringing them back. They're coming back to Israel slow, but they're, they are coming back. But they're scattered. And I've been listening to uh, Ezra and Nehemiah and those. And it's like, you know, it's amazing. All that God has done for Israel, and they still went out and did the opposite. He really chastised them for marrying into other countries, other nations. He said, don't do this. Don't marry them. But we see it's growing worse and worse and worse today. And I remember one time there were some issues about certain cultures. And the marriage of these cultures. And I remember our pastor, he said, it's not the color of your skin. It's the culture that we're concerned about. If they go into the culture, then it's going to be drawing these folks away. And it has. We've seen it unfold. It's worse now than it was back in the 70s when I heard him say this. It's not, again, the color of the skin. It's the culture that they're leaving because they're leaving one culture and going another. And that's why God said, do not marry into these nations because they have a different culture. They have a different God. And therefore, it caused them great problems. And part of the reason of that happening is what's going on today. That's why things are such a mess because of them marrying into these other cultures. What we see here in this valley of dry bones, this is a picture of utter desolation. I mean, just try to picture this, okay? This valley full of bones. And we see through what Ezekiel is saying here, these weren't just dry bo bones, they were dry bones. You probably could pick them up and snap them like a twig. You know, that's how dry they were. And we can see a wretched and ruined people. And if you continue down that path without Christ, you are a wretched and ruined person. The only way that you can recover from that is to trust Christ as your Savior. That's the only way it's going to recover from this. But you have to have that Christ. So we see here in verse 2, 
this wretched and ruined people, it was very many. And as Ezekiel says here, it was very dry. Very many and very dry. How many? We don't really know how many. Through their backsliding and indifference to God's word, they had become like bleached bones. As long as Israel remains in the state that they're in and deny Christ as the Messiah, they're going to remain in this state. They're going to remain in their very many at their very dry. They are backslidden. They're indifferent because they won't believe in Christ. They won't believe that he was the Messiah. They're still looking. They're still looking for the Messiah. But yet, and they don't know it yet, but they're going to fall into the hands of the Antichrist for some time. And then when that happens, then God's going to come down and pull them, the 144,000 out of that. And then a, there will be a great revival at that time, I believe. We won't be here, but there will be at that time for them. We see no evidence, whatever, of spiritual sap or life in them. Nothing. There's nothing there. I mean, it's kind of hard to picture that there's a bone laying there, you know, a multitude of bones laying there that there isn't any kind of moisture in them at all. Because Ezekiel said they were very dry. Like I said, you could snap them like a twig. They were so dry. They were dried up through pride, worldliness, and self-dependence. And this is what's happening to the church today. The very same thing. When we get to that place, we need to be very careful of what happens after that. The same principles produce the same results today, but how few see it. There are so many folks that are, they may be in church today or what they call church today. They may be in that, but they don't see the whole picture because they're not taught the whole picture. They're not taught the whole counsel of God. Therefore, they're never going to know it. That's why it's so important when we said this morning, study to show yourself approved. If they're not studying, then there's a problem. You can't rely on a man to teach you and tell you everything there is to know. I mean, I'm going to try, but don't take my word for it. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to get in there and I want you to look. I want you to study for yourself. I want you to see that these things are true. If I tell you something, then you should say, okay, I'm going to check him out and check me out. And if they're not true, then I expect you to come to me and say, well, that's not what I found. That's not what I see. And we'll talk about it. The third point we want to make is the testing question. There was a question that was asked Ezekiel, verse 3. Son of man, can these bones live? How would you answer that? This question can only come home to those whose eyes have been open to see the awful need of spiritual life. The blind man would answer, what bones? I don't see any bones. Things are quiet and peaceful and the valley is lovely and attractive. That's what the world sees. There's no bones. There's no bones there. Just think of the responsibility that rests with a spirit-taught man. See, when we see these things, then we see our responsibility, or we should see our responsibility because we're led by the spirit. That's why sin grieves us so much. It tears at us. It's a grieving thing. But many don't see it. Many that claim to be saved 
many that are members of a New Testament Baptist church, they don't see the whole picture. They only see it when it's convenient for them. The opened eye is a new opening for work. When we were saved, we just don't sit down, twiddle our thumbs and wait. I don't know how you all felt when you were saved, but I wanted to tell everybody. <laughs> you know, it was so exciting for me that I was saved and that I knew Jesus Christ in a way that I never knew him, that I was so excited. I wanted to let everybody know that. And I wanted to see them in the same situation. I want you to see what I see. Well, after a while, you get shot down so many times, you understand they can't do it. They can't do it because they have to be changed. They have to be different. They have to be have God's hand upon them that they may be able to see. And that's where Israel's at right now. They cannot see. They cannot see the truth. The next point is a thoughtful answer. He says there in verse 3, I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. He only could know, for he alone could make them live. What could Ezekiel do? What is there out there that Ezekiel could do of anything? I mean, he'd go out there and dump some water on some dry bones and hopefully they, they came alive again. Well, if the human being would see that, he would think it was impossible, right? It's an impossibility. But all things are possible with God. When we look at science and art and all the philosophies of men have no remedy for a soul dead in sin and dried up with iniquity. Ezekiel answered correctly, thou knowest. Only God can do it. See, because salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. It is good in a crisis like this, to cast ourselves on the wisdom and power of God because we can't see it for ourselves. I mean, put yourself in Ezekiel's shoe. He takes you out there, puts you in this valley, and he says, what do you see? Well, I see a bunch of dry bones. Well, I see very dry bones. He said, do you think they can live? Well, God, only thou knowest because I, I sure don't have no hope that they would. Who would? Who would have the thought that they could do that? So when we bring this back to the salvation of people and we look at somebody and say, God says, am I able? Only you know, Lord. Can this person be saved? Only you know, Lord. See, we can't make that call. We, we you know, we do. Many times we look at a person and say, well, there ain't no way God's going to save that person. But all you got to do is look in the mirror and say, well, I was like that person. I was the same as that person. And we may say, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. But a thought, word, indeed, you may have been that person. You may not have committed those things, but you, in thought, word, indeed, were that very person. You didn't save yourself, right? Because only God can do that. So it's a loving God that is the one that can do those things. So the only thing we can answer to him is this, thou knowest. Only thou knowest whether that person can be saved or not, or will be saved. We look at Israel and all their sin and everything that they've done and contrary against God. Can they be saved? Thou knowest. See, we hope but we can't do anything about it other than do what we're responsible to do, and that's proclaim the gospel and let God then do it. So what is Ezekiel? What can he do? What is anything that he's, he's out there by himself and alone? There's nobody else around except all these dry bones. 
and then we see the remedy. We see the remedy. The divine remedy is revealed when the need has been seen and painfully felt. These are his people, by the way. Understand that. These are Ezekiel's people. So it is twofold. He is commanded to speak to the bones on God's behalf. Look at verse 4. And again he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now I didn't read this this morning, but I'm going to go there. You don't have to go there, but Matthew 28. And tell me if this isn't the same command. Verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Why was Ezekiel able to do anything there? Because God gave him the authority to do it. There's where it lies. This is where so many people have ought with us because we have the authority. He had the authority. All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, there's the command. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. But God, but they won't listen. Go. Don't, don't matter if they listen or not. The command is Go. And we go back here to number four again. Again, he said unto them, prophesy unto these bones. Well, wait a minute, they're dead. See, Ezekiel didn't give an excuse like so many are doing today. He didn't give an excuse. And God said, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, but they're dead. They're dry. They're very dry. See, he didn't argue with him. He didn't argue with him because the only thing that God, that Ezekiel knew is that God knows. See, he was able. God is able to do it. I can't do it. Ezekiel can't do it. But God can. And he spake to God on their behalf. Look at verse 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds and breathe and or breathe and breath upon them these slain that they may live. How do you think we would look at that? They're dead. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing we can keep saying. They're dead. How can the winds Make them alive. Well, it's the breath of God. It's the breath of God. It's not just to restore them, but it's to make them alive. In verse 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And God made man in his image and breathed into him and he became a living soul. Adam died spiritually. We all are born dead spiritually. What do we need to become alive again? To be born again, Christ told Nicodemus. To be born again, the breath of life. That's where he said, and the wind bloweth where it listeth. And we don't hear the sound thereof, but it is what makes us alive. The breath of God. That's how people are saved. No other way. So then Ezekiel says, oh, well, I prophesied as I was commanded. 
aren't we commanded? There in Matthew, isn't that the great commission that, that Christ told the church there? He told the church. He just didn't tell individuals. He told the church, this is what you need to do till I come. And I was commanded. And as I prophesied, now I can't only imagine this. I, I tried to picture this in my head and I said, I can only imagine this. There was a noise. And behold, a shaking and the bones came together. Bone of his bone. The sinew came upon, the flesh came upon there in verse eight. And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. This is what people are today. See, they're, they're, they're walking around. They have the bone, they have the sinew, they have the skin, but they don't have any life. Isn't that what a lost person is? It's a person without life. Because there's no breath in them. There's no breath in them. So what he's telling him here is what Christ was telling there in Matthew 28. Preach the word of the Lord, there in verse 4, and pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. The preaching is to be in the faith of his promise. Verse 5, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. <laughs> you imagine being in Ezekiel's shoes, and you're standing there, and you're watching this, this leg over here is connecting to this body over here, and this skull is laying over here, and it's connected to the body over there. Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, we're not talking about just a couple people out there. This was an army, a great multitude army that was destroyed at one point, and now they're going to live again. Wasn't Israel a great army at one time? It is the spirit that quickeneth. There in verse 6 through 8. What's the results? Well, the results were according as he had said. Look at verse 10. So I prophesied. So I preached the word as he commanded me. And the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. But the results are according to he said. According to what God said, an army of men raised from the dead stood upon their feet, ready to breathe out their God-given life in his service. What did Paul tell the Romans in chapter 6, verse 11? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Amazing. Isn't it an amazing thing when a person is saved? How much more amazing? I mean, we, we see this and we find this is unbelievable what Ezekiel was seeing here. And all these bones were coming together and a and everything come back on them and the breath is in them and they stand up and they're alive. Well, what's the difference between this and a lost soul being saved and coming forward and saying, Jesus, save me. I believe. We see that miracle, not as much as we'd like, but we say, see the same miracle happening all the time. When one comes and is saved. May God bless his word to your heart today. Let's all stand. Yeah.